Action. The bedrock of Australia's film industry is television. It's well regarded around the world and has produced some of the biggest stars in Hollywood. It's also nurtured talent behind the camera, from audio engineers and makeup artists to set designers and photographers. The latest miniseries, Janet King, is a legal drama being shot in Sydney. Back in the mid 1990s, when the Australian dollar was much weaker against its American cousin, these production skills were in high demand from foreign movie makers. But many have abandoned Australia in recent years because of a soaring currency. They come, they respect the work done here, the crews are great, the weather's good, uh, there are very good studios here, um, but it's harder at a dollar and three compared to 75 cents, let alone 50 cents. Five years ago, Sydney sparkled at the premiere of Australia, Baz Luhrmann's World War II epic. It was a homegrown triumph, starring Nicole Kidman and Hugh Jackman, and became one of the country's highest grossing films of all time. It again showed what the industry was capable of, but talent, good looks and spectacular scenery haven't been enough to attract foreign movie producers, while the dollar remains so strong does get a bit depressing but I know that um, with the right incentives and knowing that Australia has so much to offer that we can still um, successfully market what we have to offer so I still jump out of bed check the weather check the exchange exchange rate and sort of you know go into bat for Australia. Photogenic Australia has a proud movie making tradition Star Wars Episode 3, Superman Returns and Moulin Rouge were all made here, along with The Great Gatsby that's due to be released in May. But the high Australian dollar that shows no significant sign of weakening will continue to hinder the local film industry. It may be forced to cut costs and wages to attract big foreign productions. Filmers at BBC News on Sydney Harbour.